from the earth. And I, I'm assuming that's true. I have no independent knowledge of whether it's true, or, but I'm, I'm pretty confident he would be telling the truth on that. Mm. And the government would be clueless, you know. They, they were out to get him no matter what and not realizing how stupid they were. And he, he, he in, addition, in addition to all of his other technical skills, he was apparently a very serious chemist. <laughs> so he understood that shit, even if they didn't. And the, um, I forgot where I was gonna tell you about that, but. Well, well, well um, also too, they, they found no trace no traces of methamphetamine uh, in his lab. But, uh... Oh, it's better. But, yeah, this is what I was going to tell you. Yeah. So he gets, he finally gets paroled. Just if you serve enough time and you haven't done anything wrong in prison, they'll parole you at a certain point. So he was paroled from federal prison. As soon as he was paroled, they arrested him. Really? And charged him. Yeah. And then took him to Washington State in front of the same judge who had handled his uh, case and got sentenced him to all those years in federal prison. And the, but the difference was this time, Reconner Suda called his the friend growing up in Washington State who was the founder and CEO or co-CEO of Costco right. and asked, asked for help. And, he, and the guy said, why didn't you call me earlier? He said, I didn't want to involve you in this. You know, he said, I'm not worried about being involved in it. And so the guy, of course, had all the money in the world is the founder of Costco, right? And contacts. And he got apparently very good, well-positioned lawyers in Washington State to represent Reconosciuto. And they quickly... Proved in front of, oh, they brought Reconosciuto before the same federal district judge who had sentenced him earlier. And, but this time, Reconosciuto had competent legal counsel, very, more than just competent, well connected. And one of them was a former U.S. attorney in Washington State. And uh, they got access to documents classified documents showing that Reconosciuto had high U.S. government security clearance. He was no drug dealer. <laughs> he had these high security clearance because he was doing highly complex consulting work for the U.S. government. That's what he claimed, and it was true, you know? And the um, so the, the, the judge who was hearing this new evidence the guy who had sentenced him had supposedly tears in his eyes. And when he announced, there's been a serious miscarriage of justice. And I'm releasing Mr. Reconosciuto on his own recognizance from this courthouse without any conditions whatsoever. He's not on parole. He owes nothing to the United States government. And he'll walk out of this courtroom a free man. And he called it a serious miscarriage of justice. And what he's talking about is that phony DEA arrest for drug trafficking. You know? do, we, do we know how much time he did in federal prison? A number of years, but I don't, I don't remember anymore whether how many years it was. I used to know that stuff, but I don't remember anymore. Oh yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't negligible. It was. Yeah. A bunch, you know. And uh, and it, so what I told you about the judge is pretty revealing. When he when he the guy who did made the mistake, I mean he was misled by the government, obviously by the the lawyers, the assistant U.S. attorneys, who were doing a political job on Reconosciuto up in Washington State, and uh, but he he was not evidently consciously part of the misconduct he was just deceived yeah know? very unusual for a judge to overturn themselves and and, uh, and admit yeah. admit that they were wrong you know and call and he used the words a serious miscarriage of justice 
Which sure sounds like it was. <laughs> yeah. And, and you said before, we're kind of shooting us out now, but he's not talking. He doesn't do any interviews or anything. I don't blame him. As far as I, yeah, as far as I know, but people have been, from what I've been told, been associated with him have been murdered yeah. in the past several years. And he, he, he knows too much. And so the, the government knows what he knows. And I'm sure they keep their eye on him, you know? Yeah. Uh, and a any other mysterious deaths or murders around this besides the ones we've already talked about? You know, just the, I, I, these people who Reconnoisseur has claimed were so closely associated with him and who ended up getting murdered in the past four or five years, I wouldn't even, uh, uh, I wouldn't even remember their names, right. you know? But my guess is he's telling the truth. It all makes sense to me, you know? And, and you couldn't be part of the inside, uh, 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 extremely bright former insider on the government's misconduct and uh, not be a threat to the government's ability to continue lying, right? Yeah, you almost wonder why there aren't more, you know, murders and to keep this, you know, to put this thing under the, under the ground, to put the whole thing under the ground, you know? Uh, yeah. Because that's the cheapest way to... Yeah, uh, but the, uh, the... He's a crafty character. He's very smart. Hmm. And people who know about him claim that he would have sequestered all kinds of evidence gotcha. at various places that, because he knows he's dealing with a corrupt government. You know? How did the relationship with Danny Casalero and Michael Riconoscito come about? Who contacted who first, you know? Well, it would have been, uh, I assume it was Danny contacting Riconoscito. But uh, it's one of those things I don't even remember much detail about anymore. But I'm guessing that that was that's the more plausible explanation. And what do you think Rakanashudo's reaction was when he found out Danny was dead? I don't know. I don't think I've ever known. Uh, I, my guess is just not believe. Uh, I don't ever remember knowing one way or the other about this, but uh, with regard to Rakanashudo, but he's too damn smart to accept at face value that Castellaro commits suicide. Right. You know. And, and all the people you've dealt with in, in all of this, has there ever been somebody who you trusted at first, you found out later on was a big mistake? Oh, there could be, but I, offhand I can't think of anybody like that. doesn't mean there isn't someone. But, you know, I've, I've mentioned to you a few times, this has gone on for decades. Yeah, sure. So it's it's uh, easy to forget some of it. You and, know? and plus, you know, trauma, you block things out when you've been traumatized right. like this for so many years. You know, when you're in litigation, right. man, it's exhausting. If people are, even when people around you aren't dropping like flies, when you're just in long-term litigation, it's exhausting. It takes over your life. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just yeah. that alone. The, uh, litigation against the federal government and then all your friends around you helping you just, uh, disappearing and turning up dead. It's a, yeah, it's I trauma. Know. It's well, trauma. We, the the I I told you that I, I used to have and probably to some extent still do, compared to most people, a very good retentive memory, right. and pe people n would note that. And w one day, when I was being cross-examined by the chief counsel for the government in the bankruptcy court. Then uh, I happened to go to the men's room at the same time he did, and he said to me, "You know, you're a trial lawyer's dream witness. You have the most retentive memory imaginable." <laughs> and he said, "You're able to come up with extraordinary detail in your memory," and I think that was true. You know, 
Yeah, and people which, used to remark that about myself, too, that I had such a good memory. I remembered every little detail. Now, not so much anymore, i got to admit. Uh, in the past <laughs> 10 years, yeah, what do you think, too? You know? um, right. Now, now the, the, the Bill Weld document that came out, the William Weld, where they're openly talking about, hey, we want you to go sell this illegal software and then loan to the money through this uh, Swiss bank account here. Um, yeah. It's, how, do you know what, where the, the source of that document came from? I used to, of course, but I don't. Don't. Uh, I can't come up with it right now. Because I'll tell you something interesting. When it was first shown to me, it was a few years ago. It was around the time of the election when he was running for election, and that thing popped up on my radar. And then we, when we would go back looking for it again, it would be gone. And I could only find it now. You mentioned before, CovertActionMagazine dot com. They're the ones who. That, that's the only place. Well, not that's the place. It's the easiest place to find it now. Uh, but other, well, other than my website. <laughs> but you know, it, it's like one of those things that it pops up on the internet and then it's scrubbed away. You know, goodbye. Uh, yeah. Well, it was pretty ballsy for him to be involved at all and to get caught. You know. And also, too, it, it, it describes in the document, too, as we did last time. So he, he did it before. <laughs> he made yeah, sort of prior yeah. incidents with this character. Yeah. It was horrible. There was so much of that going on. Yeah. That, that kind of shit, you know? Oh, I'm saying the wrote it, the wrong word to you. Do it again. <laughs> That's okay, man. You, you got to pass. Oh, now, what about the – do you know if Bill Weld was ever questioned about that? Doc? Has anybody ever said a word to him in public about that? I, if they, they did, I have no memory one way or the other. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they have it. Yeah. We got about ten minutes left. You, you got to. Is there something I haven't asked you in the three hours we've done? Um, that you think, boy, I really want the world to know this. You know, there's another aspect to Lockheed Martin. I, I okay. don't know if I've gone over it with you. Um, when Boyden Gray was representing Inslaw after Elliot Richardson had passed away, Boyden had been at one point the White House consul, and he was approached by Lockheed Martin's corporate headquarters, which asked him to get me to sign a draft non-disclosure agreement drafted by Lockheed Martin's corporate headquarters so that we could have a meeting meeting Inslaw, me Boyden Gray and the lawyers for Lockheed Martin and have a frank discussion about the Inslaw case and Boyden Gray advised me to sign the agreement, he reviewed it and I signed it and um, shortly after I signed it Boyden told me Lockheed Martin's corporate headquarters had changed their mind and no longer wanted to have the meeting. <laughs> and Boyden's hypothesis, I'm using that word because I don't know how he knew this, was that um, Boyden got, I mean, that Lockheed Martin got worried about either unfavorable publicity that could come out of the revelations or worse, meaning possible criminal prosecutions mm. of Lockheed Martin people for stealing this stuff, you know? And so they decided it was their idea to seek this non-disclosure signature, and they got it. And then they did, they reneged. And it's it all makes more sense based on what I've told you about um, that book by Ben Rich right. and the and the uh, contacts, almost humorous contacts by the publisher of the official commemorative book on the 50th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force and how Inflaw was one of the three U.S. software vendors with the largest installed basis of its products in the Air Force even though we never sold anything to the Air Force, you know? It's, it's, it's a spectacular screw-up by these people. 
Yeah, do you think just well, let's give William Hamilton a job and you know, a no show job? <laughs> you know, three hundred thousand. <laughs> like, I don't know. They don't understand so much. It just makes no. I guess there's a lot of uh, spite and rivalry and things going on too as well. Um, what was I going to ask you? Um, Oh, your your experience in the NSA, right? And you were telling me about how yeah. they needed to do a black bag job to get a certain chip in there. I'm sure they've overcome that now. Whenever every commercially sold device doesn't require.